Stop trying to get rich, get better. Improving your product is the highest leverage thing you can do because every single person gets that product. And so you work on it one time and then it's, you know, cut, cut once, sell a hundred times, cut once, sell a thousand times. Whereas marketing is a, is a linear relationship. You have to go market more to get more customers. But if you continue to improve the product, that thing can get you a hundred times more customers or massively increase LTV. And so you get a disproportionate return on the effort you put in on making your thing better than you do on getting more customers. If your goal to grow your business is you say, okay, I sell books. Great, I sell books. In order for me to grow my book business, I have to get more people to buy my book and that's it, period. Well, if you do that, um, there's, you literally just have to market and sell for the rest of your entire life. And the only way to grow your business is to advertise more. You have to look at the back of the business and say, why are there so many holes in my bucket? Because just pouring more water into the holy bucket, like everyone understands this conceptually, but we don't act that way. And I say this from experience because in the earlier part of my career, I only chased revenue and I chased profit. I just wanted, I wanted growth at all costs. But the thing is, is that sometimes the cost of that growth is the long-term growth of the business. And so it's like you sacrifice the long-term growth so that you can grow faster in the short term. And so big picture, what, what, you, what you wanna do is figure out something that people don't stop buying. And I feel like I say this over and over again, but like no one does it. And so it doesn't have to be a recurring business model. You just have something that people either tell their friends immediately about. So like in the book instance, we sell almost a million dollars a month in books. I don't advertise the books, right? And it's because people read it and then they post about it and they tell their friends and then other people buy the book and that, that circle goes on. And it's because we spent more time on the product. And it's the sandwich shop that's like, I have to sell more customers into my sandwich shop, but their sandwiches are just mediocre. And so they're gonna be stuck forever trying to figure out what the new hook is. You have to find out why people aren't buying again. You have to find out why people aren't referring their friends. And sometimes you're like, well, when I ask them, they don't tell me. It's like, sometimes you have to read between the lines. And that's the hard part. But that's the work. Like, that's the work. The problem is not that you don't have enough leads. The problem is you can't afford them because your product sucks. He who can make his customers the most valuable wins. Because being able to spend the most is a product of how much you make a customer worth to you, which is a function of what the gross profit is and how many times they buy. And referrals come from every sale. And so if every sale, one, that person keeps buying, and two, they send you another customer, guess what happens? That cat gets cut in half. And so you need an equally strong compounding vehicle that works in your favor to maintain your LTV to CAC ratio. And so when you improve product, you also decrease CAC via referrals at scale. So it doesn't matter how much scale you have, if you deliver an exceptional product, you will be able to have, you always know that 1.3 customers or every customer brings you, you know, whatever, 0.3 new customers on top of that. So you decrease your cost required by 30%. And you get the LTV boost that happens on the back end as well, which is that they buy more and they, they spend longer, they're willing to pay a premium and so forth. And the third, Third wheel of that in terms of product is that product is the end of the brand cycle. So if you think about brand as a reinforcing loop, right? In the beginning, when you start a company, you make a promise. Fundamentally, that's how you enter marketplace. You say, I'm gonna solve this problem. That is my promise to you, all right? And anyone can say that. What builds the business over the long term is your ability to deliver on that promise. Everyone understands positive word of mouth. We all get that, right? We're like, oh yeah, I get referrals. Did you know that you have far more negative referrals? You have way more detractors. You have way more people that when they see an ad of your business, what do they do? They reach out to other people to ask about you. And then people who would have purchased choose not to based on information they get online or asking someone they know. Building a brand is, in my opinion, the good side of marketing. And the brand is simply the associations that people have with your product. Brand-driven advertising is more profitable than the pure, scammy, direct response stuff. It just takes longer. There's three lines that you have to keep in touch with. You have the price that you charge, you have the value that they get, and then you have the cost associated with delivering the thing. And so you want these lines to be as far apart as humanly possible. All of them. You want them to be spread out super, super far. You want to have crazy high value at the top. You want a price that's a premium. And then you want to have a lot of juice left over relative to your cost. 
And the way to get that kind of space between your cost and your price is to do the work of the hundred details that your competitors aren't willing to do. The compounding vehicle in the business for most businesses is the quality of their product. That is the compounding vehicle. You have to get people to continue to buy.